Hi, friends. Good heavens. Hi, gang. Yes, sir, this is Clyde Wallach reminding you that anything in this... <laughs> Everything and anything is $4.95. Our salesmen are $4.95. Our Lakewood store is $4.95. Uh, <laughs> I, would like, I would like to introduce that I've been most anxious to meet. Uh, I had the good fortune of watching this gentleman lose me a bet and uh, I would like you to meet a young man who I believe has a fantastic capacity for showmanship moreover uh, I think that he is one of the living examples of how gullible we can be in many aspects <laughs> Mr. Cassius Clay ladies and gentlemen Cassius, welcome Jerry. to the show. Glad to be here. First of all, I want to say hello to Mommy and Daddy and Rudolph and Sammy and Jimmy and Clara and Sharon and the world's greatest rock and roll singer, Miss Dee Dee Sharp. And these are promises I made. And um, let me see who else is out there. Keep the one about oh, listing. Yeah, That's I met the Sam Cooke's to. daughter today, the prettiest little girl who? in the world. Sam Cooke's daughter. Linda, hi, and everybody, and I'm, thank you, that's all I'm going to say. Well, that's fine. Now I'd like in, in equal time. Morris. <laughs> Hello oh, to I Irving. <laughs> Yetta, Miriam. <laughs> Shirley, and the world's greatest Hanukkah maker. Cassius Man, Welcome. I thought I was crazy, but you got me beat. <laughs> no, you're not. Really something, Jerry. You're not crazy at all. I don't think you're crazy. I think that you have a, I think that you have a lust for showmanship. No, I was, I was joking. I'm really, I know really great. You're what? I'm, I'm really great. <laughs> Jerry, I'm the greatest fighter that ever stepped foot in a ring. I'm so great, I tell a clown what round he's going down. Fifteen times I have predicted the exact round. I shook up the world, just left London, England, told the heavyweight champion of the British Empire. I said, Tramp, this is no jive. The fight will end in five. And it did. 55,000 people lost their money. Well, well I, I, I'm, I'm aware of your record, and I know that, as you say, I, I wouldn't question. If you say you're the greatest, I wouldn't stand here and say, you, you ain't. You smart. <laughs> you really smart. Now, if I had to back up what you had, I'd say I'm also the greatest, you see, and that everyone else is nuts, and that I was going to have a show even if it wasn't on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you about the fight. I watched the fight, the last Moore fight, you and Moore. I was in San Diego, which happens to be the greatest little town in the world. It's a mm -hmm. community of people. They have uh, community ideas, and everybody is like a family there. And I went to the... Uh, Fox Theater in San Diego to watch you fight. A lot of foxes there. Archie Moore. That was good. A lot of foxes there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I very honestly, I must tell you that I didn't bet on you. I had a bet on Mr. Moore. And I'm oh, sure you're you, aware. You lost your money, huh? Yeah, I certainly did. Now, if you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sonny. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? The big ugly bear, Sonny Liston. The big ugly bear. I'm getting ready to participate. He said, I'm he said. Wait, let's just... Now you he... talk too much. <laughs> Sonny, so, uh, uh, Cassius said, big ugly bear. I was merely repeating what Cassius said. You see, because I have a, fa a faint suspicion that if Sonny was ever mad at me, it would be very much like that day at Normandy. <laughs> I don't want to be standing in front of him. I met him in Las Vegas when we did our show from Las Vegas. Ain't he something? Oh. You know, I just saw this little monkey out there. Those things have more sense than him. You, you, you're, uh, you, you, you're... Jerry, I'm real angry. People think I'm talking. People think I'm just a lot of mouth. But, but I'm getting ready to participate in the biggest fight of all time. More money will be lost that night. This will be the biggest upset in the century of all boxing. Uh -huh. Are you going to show up? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Like what you mean I'm not going to show up? Because, Don't uh, never embarrass me like that. Nuts! <laughs> That's embarrassing. 
Wait a minute, Cassius, please understand me. I'm not being facetious. I would have said the same thing to Sonny. Sonny Tufts. <laughs> I, I would honestly not believe Sonny Liston would show up. I mean, between the two of you, I think that there's a great contest involved. And I'm a, I'm a fight fan. I'm a sports fan all of my life. And if I very come, honestly... If huh? you come to the fight, get there early, I might cut it from eight to one. Well, well I wouldn't want to be the instigator to giving him this kind of trouble. I, I'm very happy. I, I would like... I'm a good sportsman. Well, I would this... like... It to come out. Well, forget all about Sonny Liston. I'm tired of talking about him. I don't blame you. I hate him. What? Were well, you going to be there to help me fight him? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't want to get involved in this. Jerry, don't you think I'm too pretty to be a fighter? <laughs> well, you're a little too tall to play June Allison, let's say that. <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. I, uh, you, you're no, a good, most fighters. You're a good looking man, well. Cassius. Well, and, and we're talking about your favorite subject, naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, Maybe, a, that's right. you're a good-looking man, and I don't understand how you don't have a mark. From I'm the greatest, Jerry. I've, I've had 280 bouts, amateur and professional, two-time national Golden Glove champion, two-time national AAU champion, Olympic champion, gold medal and winner in Rome. Now I'm as pretty as you, and you're not a fighter. Hmm? All you do is talk for a living. Well, up to now, I was making a living at it. <laughs> you do have all of... Were you with the Olympics, Cassius? Yeah. I was what in year? 1960. You I want me, you want me to... I my match when I met you. You want me to tell you what I think? Now, we're on live television. There's no editing this. You want me to tell you what I think? Well, be cool. You're no fool. You went to school. I got... <laughs> let, me, let me just say to this to you. I'm going to say what I think. And if what I think you don't like... Make your move. <laughs> because if I, I feel froggy, I jump. Because <laughs> I learned a long time ago when I was in school, there's no size that you've got to be concerned with as long as you've got something behind it, such as enthusiasm and belief. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to say, just hear this. Because if you don't hear it good and you get upset with me, I just haven't prepared for... Well, I'd like to get my things in order. Let's say that. <laughs> Let me tell you that's what best, I think. Best, this, is what I, this is what I want to say. I think, and this of course is one man's opinion, and I hope I don't embarrass you, and I don't mean to embarrass you, and I certainly don't mean in any way to uh, impose upon your presence here, because I did want you on the show. I think you're a big bag of wind. <laughs> now, just hear me out. Wait a minute. Hold it a second. I think that one... Bodyguards. Hold it. <laughs> Let Some... me tell you... Wait, will you sit quiet for one minute, Charlie? This is what I'm trying to say. I think, one, you're a fine fighter, you know what you're doing, and sec most importantly, you know what you're talking about, except I think that you are the closest thing to Barnum that we have ever had. I think that you're the damnedest showman that ever lived, and you ain't kidding anybody. People Will you let me finish and shut your mouth for one minute? <laughs> and this is just what I believe. I he think wasn't so small, he wouldn't be talking so bold. <laughs> I think that what you have established between yourself and Sonny Liston is probably the most fantastic pre-advance showmanship since Barnum brought the circus to town. And I think that you, sh you should be credited for it. Whether people know or not that beneath this phony exterior is a very sensitive, nice young man, whether they know that or not, they, well, they still... That, but... Will you let me finish? <laughs> Do you know you have a 33 and a third long playing mouth? Not a 33 and a third. 78. 300. <laughs> All right. See how tough it is to add? Now, <laughs> will you let me finish? I'm making a point. The point is that whatever your concept is... You hit me. I'm going to let you get away with it. <laughs> now, go on. <laughs> go on. Boy, you something else. Right? <laughs> Go ahead, hit back. I hit you there, hit back. Go ahead. Go on. Please, Jerry, you and our buddies, please, let's don't get started. Please. Now, folks, I hit him, didn't I? What did Liston pay you to do that? He just told me to Liston, that's all. No, I'm serious. I, I have a great regard for what you're doing. And I, I wish you all of the best. I'm rooting for you. 
And I think that the people, knowing full well that you're a good showman... I also think they should know all of this is unrehearsed. Well, if they don't know that it's unrehearsed, and if they don't know that live television should work this way, I think it's a little late also, now. Also, man tag me and get away with it. It's unrehearsed. <laughs> You can bet that uh, I, I check out who I'm dealing with, and I looked at his eyes, and I found that he adored me, and naturally I wouldn't, you know. <laughs> Up to now is probably the best showmanship that's happened in the fight racket in a lot of years, and it needs it. I think that the fight game needs somebody with color and somebody with excitement, and you I have given it to them. I want to say one thing, if you be quiet yes. for a minute. <laughs> Look, Jerry, see, people call this showmanship, and they say I'm just acting, it's just a gimmick. But how could I pop off for five years, predict these things. Fifteen times I predicted the exact round. I'm not denying that. Well, I mean, it's not just showmanship. Wait I'm a back it up. Wait a second. See, I'm not talking for my health. I'm talking for my wealth. <laughs> well, I must say this. I must say this that um, as the poet laureate of the United States. Uh, I, I don't know whether that's important or not. The important thing is that I said nothing about your capacity. I said nothing about your being capable of following up what you said, because mm -hmm. that goes without saying, because I think that to put away the people you've put away, you've done it in fine fashion, and you have to know what you're doing. And you in can't... poetic fashion. Yeah, wonderful. Sit back for a second, will you? I'm still talking. I'm all right. I'm okay. Right. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that I'm talking about the approach to your ability. I got you. Now, many of us have capacity, and yet there are different ways of approaching it. You've approached it from a very, very theatrical, very bright standpoint. Now, had you not been able to back it up, you'd be in big trouble. But you've been able to back it up, so I'm merely complimenting you. That's all. Right. all. And why, now, you know what happens after a compliment? The best thing, I had this here for you. Just light it, sweetheart. <laughs> the best thing to do after a compliment is to say thank you. You are. Or I'll take well, it back. I'm talking. You got me beat. Somebody told me. And whenever a man can have a two-hour program and, and unrehearse for two hours, he, he can beat me talking. No, you don't have to talk. <laughs> Cassius, please forgive us for going away for a moment. We'll be right back. We have a commercial, ladies and gentlemen, from Coldwater Oil. It's very interesting. It's the first time in the history of the world that this happens. Watch this.